A central Illinois man's love for racing started at an early age. And then when he started a family of his own, his kids took a fancy in the sport. A new force in midget car racing began after traveling around to watch the local race scene. From the Sea Living Vault of 2012, this is Drew Wander, who's going to take us racing. Dirk was in seventh or eighth grade. He had a little interest on, you know, watching racing. It was awesome. It was really cool. And I thought if I could ever have the opportunity to do something like that one day, I definitely wanted to take the chance to. And so began shoe and racing. Jim and Derek started in quarter minutes and learned how to race and how to work on the cars as they traveled along the local racing circuit. From Taylorville to Macon to Terre Haute and everywhere in between. It wasn't long after, Derek's younger brother, Kyle, took an interest in the sport as well. I believe Kyle was uh, 10 when he got involved, and uh, that was after Derek was doing it for about a year. When I was 8 years old, in fact, uh, I saw him racing over at uh, ALQMA in Lincoln, Illinois, and uh, I always thought, you know, I, I really didn't want to do it at first, and it was kind of just like, I kind of wanted to stick with the basketball and baseball. Then all of a sudden, you know, Dad, when can I try? Then I kind of thought, yeah, I, I want to race. And in fact, I approached my dad and I was like, I want to do what he's doing. And I got into the novice program. The fact that I've been able to see him progress from not wanting to race to, you know, not being you know, able to get enough of it. I mean, the fact that w when uh, the very last regional race that he ran in quarter measures, he won all three divisions that he was in, and that, that was huge. Um, also, to see him in these cars, like uh, when he ran restricted class, um, to be able to see him, the moves that he was able to make just in, you know, a split second, I mean, it, it was really awesome. What's more awesome is that the Shewitts are still going after him and still competing at a high level. The family is preparing their midget cars for a night of racing at Beacon Speedway. There are several classes of cars and events. The boys will race in different heats to qualify for the later races in their class. The biggest thing to do is to try to keep all emotions out of it. You want to be calm, cool, and collected at all times. You don't want to let anything rub you the wrong way. You want to make sure that you're focused on you know, your job, which you're there to do is to race to win or to get a good finish. So. Between races, they head back to home base, tweak their cars, and listen to what Dad and the rest of the team are seeing from the grandstands. And they try and be that much faster in the next race. I mean, sometimes the car isn't the best. We've got cockpit adjustable things in the car. We have shocks that we can adjust and a wing that we can move back or move forward. And uh, that plays a huge part in helping the car. Um, biggest thing is, you know, obviously if the car is not right, is trying to figure out what you can do as a driver and also as a, you know, a, an engineer to an extent to take it to the front to make it better. Both Derek and Kyle advance throughout the night and wind up in the same qualifier for the feature race. <laughs> Derek advances on to the feature race of the night. He'll compete for the top Power Eye prize at Macon. Kyle joins his family in the grandstands for the night's final event. The race began like it would end up being all night long. A sloppy collision of cars, yellow flags, and restarts. Unfortunately, Derek's car bore the brunt of a mistake by another driver. I feel bad that I couldn't get a better finish for everybody, but when something like that happens, it was a racing deal, you get ran over on the start. I mean, it's it's either you know try to keep right, going with a broke car and risk yes, breaking it even worse, or just pull into the infield and save it for next weekend. And I chose to save it. So how tough is that decision in the moment? It's real tough to have to swallow your pride and have to 
step back and look at the bigger picture and because you, you want to race you want to go out there and try to win right away you know in, in in the moment that you're in in that feature i wanted to go out and try to win but you got to look at the bigger picture it's not worth you know trying to win and tearing something up versus you know saving the car for the longer run the team as a whole applauds derek's wise decision to minimize the damage to the car and wait for the next race it's been real good for our family we're always together on weekends uh, uh, Derek, of course, uh, goes to school down at Eastern, so he's gone, you know, during the week, and then he's back on weekends because we have a lot of work to do on maintaining and uh, keeping everything up around here as far as the racing team goes. Before you got here, we were actually loading up the motorhome to get ready to leave, and I pulled my parents aside. I said, to, you know, I just wanted to tell you guys thanks for everything you do, all the hard work, you know, the sacrifices that you guys make so that I can do this, and it really means a lot. You know, it's, this isn't just another stick and ball sport where you show up for practice and then when you're done, you know, at the end of the day, it's done. I mean, this is constantly, you're, you're giving up going to the movies or going and hanging out with friends to work on the car, to make sure it's set up, to wash it, you know, I mean, everything. It's, it's a second full-time job if you're already working a job. It's uh, really awesome that my parents are behind me 100% no matter what I do. Um, you know, they put a lot in for me to race. I mean, this takes a lot because uh, we're always out here 24-7. You know, every minute we get, we're out here maintaining the cars, trying to fix something, trying to get better on the racetrack. And, you know, I just got to thank them for everything because they're the ones that make this happen. It's the most gratifying thing I, I, I can experience to know that we're, that we're together every weekend and they want to be with us and they want to do this and we want to support them. Uh, I can't ask for anything better than... To, to be part of what they love to do every weekend. And that was Drew Wilder reporting from all the way back in 2012.